Hi guys, I'm Ant reynolds Lene, and I'm the lead of our world building team. And I'm Graham McNeil, senior writer in the world building team. So some of you guys have been asking a little bit about the regional updates that we've been doing recently, talking about like the regions and cultures of Runeterra. Because we're doing the rework with Galio and everything, which we're really excited about, this just seemed like a really good time to dive into Demacia, what it's all about, a little, talk a little bit about its history, um, its, its military, how it came to be and stuff like that. So one of the things we wanted to do with Demacia from a world building perspective was to make it a little bit more three dimensional. We didn't want to move away from what Demacia was, like we still love Demacia and, and, and what it is. We wanted to retain the core essence of what it is. Um, but we wanted to add a little bit more nuance to it, make it a little bit more interesting. We tackled that from a few different angles. So we wanted to try and make it visually a little bit more unique, but also in terms of fleshing out its culture and its history. Yeah, and the, the history of Demacia stems from the, the Rune War, which was a uh cataclysmic, world-spanning war that almost destroyed the world and brought the races of Runeterra to the edge of extinction. And the survivors of that war, people fleeing its destructive wild magics, founded Demacia in this realm that was curiously unaffected by that wild magic. It was a fertile place, it was self-sufficient, it was seemed kind of immune to the magics that were ravaging the rest of the world, and crucially it was defensible. So they settled here and they built walls to defend what they had because they knew that a place of refuge in the wake of this destruction would prove very desirable to all others. So they wanted to make sure that nobody would take it from them. So that gave rise to a culture that was fiercely independent, insular and had a very, very powerful military to defend it. One of the things we wanted to emphasize with Demacia is the elite nature of its military force. So while other cultures probably vastly outnumber them in terms of the size of their army, so the armies of Noxus, the Freljord and Ionia probably are much, much bigger. Um, Demacia is small, but it's, it's very, very powerful. So every soldier in Demacia is highly trained in various forms of combat. So they're all trained with whatever weapon they might need to use on the battlefield, be it sword or spear or lance or bow. Every soldier is also trained in every battlefield role. So any soldier could fulfill the role of like a scout or an outrider or a frontline fighter whenever they need to do that. They're also incredibly disciplined. They're like the most cohesive, unified military force we can see in Runeterra. Very, very well organized, very good command structure. It's the kind of army that these guys have probably won dozens and dozens of battles in the past against like much, much bigger forces. So even outnumbered, they, cannot, they usually come out on top. They probably have the best armor and best weapons of any military in Runeterra. Um, and a big part of that comes down to what it's made from, Damasian steel. Um, the idea with Damasian steel is that this is the, the strongest, most superior and lightest uh, steel that you can find. Um, and one of the things that we've sort of hinted at here is that there might even be a sort of slightly anti-magic property around Demacian steel so that when, so when its armies march to war, its soldiers actually have some kind of mild protection against uh, hostile magic. Yeah, because magic is such a rare thing in Runeterra and especially so in Demacia because given how the country was formed in the wake of the Rune Wars, its people have been raised on folk tales of dark mages and powerful wild magics that almost destroyed the world. So quite naturally, they, they fear magic and are suspicious of it. But that was a long, long time ago. Much of this magic has never been seen in Demacia. There's pockets of Demacia where they, they don't even believe that magic is real anymore because it's not woven into the fabric of the nation like it might be in a place like Ionia. Even those who might have seen something magical are able to rationalize it into something mundane in a way that doesn't compromise their way of thinking. Lux is an interesting character for exploring the idea of magic in Demacia because she's well known as somebody who helps the helpless, who looks after the poor and is well regarded by everybody in Demacia. So for her to have this magic at her heart leaves her fairly conflicted. That makes for an interesting dilemma for a character who has this power but lives in a place where she can't actually acknowledge that she has it. So this certainly doesn't mean that we're done with Demacia, very far from it. We didn't get around to doing every single bio and story we wanted to um, this time around, so there's plenty more to come back to. Um, for us, we actually see this as uh, laying a good foundation for the future. So we've established here a little bit more about what Demacia is and its core themes and stuff like that. And using all that material now, we can move forward and start telling some bigger stories.
So if you guys want to learn more um, about Demacia or any other part of Runeterra or any of the champions, head on over to the Universe site. There's lots of information there, there's lots of bios, lots of stories, so make sure you go and check that out. Um, so thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, if you guys have got any comments or any feedback or questions, we'd love to hear it. So please leave a comment um, and we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks very much.